Eleanor from Kids Quest Children's Museum and today we're going to be doing an activity together where we get to move because I know being cooped up inside is pretty hard and we're also going to learn about math at the same time and the kind of math that we're learning about is probability and probability is the likelihood that something will happen. So you've probably talked about probability by talking about coin tosses before. So when we toss a coin, how many possible outcomes are there? You can land on tails, or you can land on heads. So that's two outcomes. So the likelihood that you'll land on tails, you've got a one in two shot of getting tails. And that's the same as 50%. So you've got a 50% chance that you're gonna get tails. Let's see if we can get it now. We got heads, so we didn't get lucky that time. But that's a pretty simple probability problem, right? Because there are only two outcomes. What happens if you're trying to figure out the probability of something that has way more outcomes? Or if you're doing an action multiple times? That's what we're going to find out today. So I've got these two cups, and they've got different numbers of pieces of paper in them. So this cup has three different exercises in it. So there's a piece of paper that says jumping jacks, there's one that says sit-ups, there's one that says push-ups. And then in this cup, I have four pieces of paper. One has the number one on it, two of them have the number five on it, and one has the number 10 on it. So I've got three in here and four in here, and we're gonna pull a piece of paper from each cup. So let's see what we get. We're gonna have to do a push-up. Uh-oh, how many times? I hope it's not 10. Five times, five push-ups. So we're gonna have to do five push-ups. So what was the likelihood that we were gonna pull that from our cups? Do you know? Do you know how many possible outcomes there are? If we have four in our number cup and three in our exercise cup? Well, we can figure that out by making a probability chart. And it's gonna look like this. So you make this by writing all of the options you have in one cup, and then all of the options you have in the other cup. So I wrote J for jumping jacks, P for push-ups, and S for sit-ups. And then all of the numbers that I had in my cup. And then you're gonna go across and you're gonna fill in what each outcome is. So here we're in the J row and the one column, so that's one jumping jack. So why don't you go ahead and make your own version of this at home so we can do these math problems together. And go ahead and fill in this whole chart. And everything that we find out that's on the inside of this black line, these are all of our possible outcomes that we can get from these cups. So we got five push-ups. So let's see how likely it was that we got that result. So we're gonna have to find five push-ups on our chart. So we've got in our push-up row, there's five push-ups, and there's another five push-ups. So that's two right there. Is it anywhere else? Just two. So we have two five push-ups on our chart. Now how many outcomes are there total? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve outcomes. So two out of twelve. And if you'd already figured out how many outcomes there were, that's probably because you multiplied three by four. Three times four is 12. So that's a smart way to figure out the number of outcomes without making a chart. But this chart will help us be able to ask and answer a lot more questions. So it's definitely handy to make this. So we had a two in 12 chance of getting five push-ups. So, can we simplify that fraction at all? Two and 12. Is 12 divisible by two? Let's think. I think six times two is 12. So that means we had a one in six chance of getting five push-ups. So that's not bad. Let's see. I know that I can't do 10 push-ups. That is scared of me. So let's see how likely it is that we get 10 push-ups. So we're going to follow our push-up row and down from 10. 10 push-ups, there it is one time. Is it anywhere else? I don't see it anywhere else. So that means we have a 1 
in 12 counts of doing one push-up. So one in 12, can we simplify that fraction at all? 12 divided by one is just 12. So that means we have a one in 12 chance. So that means it's the less likely that we're gonna have to do 10 push-ups because one is smaller than two. And I like to hear that because I don't think I can do 10 push-ups. So this is one of the ways that we can find outcomes using our chart. And we can also ask questions like, what is the likelihood that we will have to do an exercise five times? So what's the likelihood that we're gonna pull a five out? Let's look. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six outcomes that have you doing an exercise five times. So that's a six in 12 chance. Now six is a lot higher than one in two. So this is the most likely outcome we've had so far. And is six divisible, I mean, is 12 divisible by six? I think so. We talked about that earlier. So that's gonna be a one in two chance. Six over 12 is the same as one over two. And that's the likelihood we had when we were flipping our coin, right? So there's a 50% chance that you're gonna have to do an exercise five times. So I guess it makes sense that for the first one we pulled out, we had to do five exercises because that was a pretty likely outcome. What about the likelihood that we're gonna have to do jumping jacks? How many times does that show up on our chart? Let's see. One, two, three, four. So there are four outcomes that have jumping jacks. Four in 12 chance. Let's see, can we simplify that? Is 12 divisible by four? I think so, four times three is 12. So we've got a one in three chance of having to do jumping jacks. So it's not quite as likely as having to do five exercises, but it's way more likely than having to do 10 push-ups, which I like to hear. So now that we have some of our probabilities figured out, see what other questions you can answer with this chart. I'll give you a few challenges. What's the likelihood that you'll have to do one sit-up? Go ahead and try and figure that out. What's the likelihood that you'll have to do 10 of an exercise? How many outcomes have 10 in them? And what percentage is that? Go ahead and see if you can figure that out. And then see if you can come up with your own question. Figure out the likelihood of something that we haven't talked about. And once you've done those fun problems, I want to give you an experiment that you can try. So we figured out with our chart that there are 12 possible outcomes. So I want you to go ahead and make these cups at home. If you feel like these numbers are too high for you to do, you feel like you can't do 10 push-ups, I get it, I don't think I can. But maybe it's a good option to have in there if you wanna practice doing your push-ups and get a little stronger. But if you think that's too much for you, you can change these numbers, that's fine. But try and have two numbers that are the same and then that'll keep our probability outcomes the same. So maybe you can do one, two, two, and three if you wanna do less exercise. So we're gonna go ahead and try this with our cups at home. So I want you to pull a number and an exercise and do it 12 times. So you're gonna be pretty sweaty after all that exercise, good job. So each time you do an exercise, a number of times, I want you to write it down. So we'll have a list going like five push-ups, 10 jumping jacks, one sit-up, another one sit-up. And you can keep track of them as you go along until you get 12 outcomes. And then I want you to compare your outcomes to the ones that we found when we did our math here. Were your 12 outcomes the same as the ones that we had on this chart? Do you think they'll be the same? They might not be, which is pretty interesting. And then go ahead and look at one of the problems we solved. We were talking about the likelihood that we'd have to do five of an exercise. And we found out that there was a six in 12 
or a 50% chance that what that was going to happen. So that means if we had been right about that number, that half of your outcomes would have a 5 in them. So go ahead and check. Did you have to do 5 exercises 50% of the time? You might not have. So you can see that your outcomes from doing the exercises just 12 times might not match the 12 outcomes we have on our chart. Why do you think that is? That's because doing an activity like this where you grab something out of a cup or roll a die or flip a coin, that is a random occurrence. So it's not going to match the theoretical math we're doing here if you do it just 12 times. But if you want to take this experiment further, I want to challenge you to do this activity once a day for a whole week. So that means you're going to do 12 exercises that you pull out of your cup for a whole week each day. And I want you to write out what all the exercises are. And then you can look at all of the new data you have, the new numbers, and you can see if your probability is closer to what we figured out by doing our math here on our chart. So you can count all of the times you had to do five exercises now, and you can see if it's closer to 50%. And you can see that as you get more and more data, your numbers will get closer to our um, percentages that we figured out by doing our math here. And that's because we have more data to help us with our outcomes and figuring out what all of them are. So this is an exercise that you can do as long as you want. And you can get a lot of, lot of data with it, which is why I really like this one. And you can also change it up by putting different numbers in these cups or different exercises to see what different probabilities you can find. So hopefully you get to do this experiment and find out some interesting things about probability. Thank you so much for watching. We hope to see you later.